horrific tragedy in Waukesha, Wisconsin, as at least five are killed and dozens more injured by a black male driving a red SUV at high speed through a Christmas parade. Alleged culprit Daryl Edward Brooks was not exactly a pillar of the community. Released just two days prior on Bondi, had a lengthy criminal record that included domestic abuse and pimping out a 16-year-old girl. But within hours of the incident, the media told us that the culprit was just fleeing the scene of another crime, and that the incident wasn't at all a targeted attack motivated by politics or race. It just happened to take place in Wisconsin two days after the Rittenhouse verdict. Just a coincidence, I'm sure, because surely the best way to evade police attention when fleeing a crime scene is to run over dozens of people at a Christmas market by deliberately swerving into them. Yeah, that makes total sense. Pretty convenient, then, that the incident definitely wasn't a deliberately targeted attack, given the suspect's political proclivities. Posts made under Brooks SoundCloud rapper name include the following. Calls for random violence to be inflicted on white people, a post that referred to white people as the enemy, another post that celebrated violence and enslavement of white people, along with numerous other anti-police posts and others that amplified BLM rhetoric and expressed solidarity with Colin Kaepernick. One of his songs titled Minnesota name checks BLM icons George Floyd and Eric Garner while asserting, quote, try and use deadly force, we're gonna go harder. But I'm sure that we can trust the authorities when they tell us that none of this was a motivating factor. Especially given that Daniel Thompson, the police chief of Waukesha, led a Black Lives Matter march in June 2020 and made his officers kneel in homage to the extremist movement. Kyle Rittenhouse was smeared by the media as a domestic terrorist white supremacist for defending himself legally against a violent mob. Imagine what their reactions would have been to a white person ploughing through a BLM rally in Wisconsin, who then, when you check their Facebook page, was also posting violent threats against African Americans and Confederate flags. I think the media may have treated the story somewhat differently. Kyle Rittenhouse shooting three Antifa in self-defense, none of whom were black, is white terrorism. A BLM supporter who made anti-white rap songs ramming his car through dozens of innocent whites at a Christmas market it just fleeing a crime. Brooks was released from Milwaukee County Jail on a paltry $1,000 bail. This after the Milwaukee County District Attorney bragged about abolishing bail. So thanks to bail reform in the name of eliminating systemic racism, the killer was set free. I guess it's just another example of black privilege. Leftist entrepreneur and social justice activist Mark Feinberg sardonically tweeted poor white people, along with a sick joke that the killer was merely acting in self-defense. Then claimed anti-Semitism when people called him out. Mary Lemansky, the social media manager for the Democratic Party of DuPage County, Illinois, said the deadly incident is karma. Twitter was also bombarded with messages from other leftists, basically dismissing the gravity of the tragedy because it almost exclusively impacted white people. I guess that's just another example of white privilege. Whether the suspect was fleeing the crime scene or the attack was deliberate doesn't really matter to the media. They'll drop the story within 48 hours like a hot potato because it doesn't fit the narrative. CNN, there's nothing more frightening today than an angry white man. Hmm. Awkward timing on that one. A black career criminal has just mowed down dozens of people in an SUV. But yeah, it's those dangerous white people we've got to worry about. When any potential motive doesn't bolster the prevailing mainstream narrative, or indeed contradicts it, the entire story is just brushed under the carpet. Just like the Las Vegas massacre, it's a total mystery. I guess we'll just never know.